Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, where we're connecting the latest stories, news, and innovation from leaders across our industry. Um, and today, I'm happy to be joined by Theo Voss, CEO and co-founder of Interlink. Theo, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so great to have you. It's nice to, to catch up. We're on day two here of Capacity Europe at the Intercontinental. How's the show going for you? Uh, it's amazing for us. It's the first presence of Interlink since we've been found in 2021. So this okay. is the first capacity that we're doing. Oh, yeah. And it's really exciting. We're having a lot of good conversations. We have been uh, announcing a new product um, just yesterday. We've been on a panel yesterday. So no, for us, it's really going well. Wow. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, first time here and already lots happening. So let's back up for a second and just let her, because you're, you, as you mentioned, relatively new to this audience. Uh, tell us about Interlink. Yeah, of course. So I think important to mention is that the people behind Interlink are not new to this industry. So everybody is an industry veteran. I've been in the industry for 10 years, but Interlink itself is relatively new. So Interlink has been founded in 2021 uh, by my co-founder Mark and me um, to combine two things in this industry. And one is the need for automation and one is the other is the need for more sustainable uh, kind of practice, more sustainable business and more sustainable products. Okay, so talk. Let's talk a bit more about that in terms of what you're doing in in the ways of automation and sustainability that are innovative yeah. for the industry. Sure. So uh, we spoke about this on the panel yesterday that we see so much growth in this industry, and um, we see traffic growing. We see new trends like AI coming up. Um, so there is a long term perspective for everybody in the industry that needs more capacity, needs more infrastructure, needs more services provision. But we're still in a time where most of this is done by hand. So most of the carriers, most of the providers, most of the telcos still have 20 weeks lead time for services. And this is where we think that in order to work with this demand, in order to fulfill this demand, we need more automation in order to scale. So Interlink is purely built on 100% automated platforms. Everything we provision, every service that is being purchased is instantaneously provisioned and there's no manual interaction needed anymore. And I think this is something where we really kind of yeah set a an example as well, uh, when you look around here at capacity, um, that this is going to be a next trend um, when it comes to technology and, uh, and, and how we do business. Um, and I think the other thing is the sustainability part for us as a business that is carbon neutral, certified since last year, yeah. one of the first big corporations in this industry, um, that we need to, yeah, that we need to make sure that we as an industry itself pay our fair share and kind of yeah take care of the responsibility that we have in terms of energy usage um and and reduce and make sure that we commit ourselves to a yeah carbon neutral but also kind of net zero journey and i think this is what interlink again is one of the forerunners here yeah that's amazing to hear i mean i sustainability continues to be such an important topic for our industry for all industries, yes. if we're being honest, but for especially for our industry, we, you know, for folks like yourself that that can make a difference in this, it's really, I think, appreciated by everyone and and so many people are, that we talk to, want to do business with with folks that share that that same um, way of thinking. So yeah, exactly. And I think the 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 beauty of of the business that we do is that we combine these two things: automation and sustainability, yep. uh, for our customers, which are mostly enterprises, and make them able to consume and not longer build. So we have a lot of build in this industry, custom build for clients, and we make this a consume approach, which is more similar to what we have in the cloud industry as of today, right. uh, where they can consume IP services, security services, layer two services all around the world. So we have a global footprint as well, yeah. um, just with a click of a button. And I think this is something also related to the discussion yesterday uh, on the panel is where we see the cloud providers, where we see large enterprises moving towards to. Uh, and I think this is also what we try and I personally, uh, as being in the industry for, for a decade now, is trying to push everybody into that direction and yeah, and setting hopefully a good example. Yeah. And so the, the you've mentioned the panel a couple of times now. It was about the convergence of connectivity and cloud. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that the panel yesterday was a bit phrased around the challenge of convergence okay, that everybody yeah. sees. But we don't feel that this is a challenge. We see it as a wonderful opportunity, actually, um, to use these tools that I mentioned earlier, automation, sustainability, um, to to move forward and, and kind of, yeah, have a much more scalable, much more cost efficient uh, way to fulfill the demand for more bandwidth, for more capacity all around the world. I see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's been great chatting with you. I, I didn't ask, where are you based? And, and so where have you come from to, 
to come here. So we have the roots in Berlin, Germany. Okay. Uh, this is where the company has been founded and yeah. is headquartered. But we're fully remote. So we have 30 employees as, as of today, 50 yeah. nationalities, and everybody is working from okay. home. Uh, we set this up from the beginning also to make the business scale and not be dependent. I mean, we have a shortage of yeah. staff. Everybody has hard time finding good people. Yeah. Uh, so this makes it much easier as we are small, but we are an international business. Right. Yeah. Covering lots of nationalities, as you said, which is so important in the in the global business that this the global marketplace. And connectivity. Yeah, exactly. And also makes it easier to hire good talent and so on and so forth. So it overcomes, again, a few of the challenges when you commit. And I think this is important from day one to be remote native um, yeah. because then... Yeah, you don't have this conflict of having people in an office and people remote. Uh, and I think this has uh, has gone well now. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's great. Great to hear. I'm I'm looking forward to talking to you again, you know, as the years progress. I'm sure we'll be here again next year, maybe at some of the other shows throughout the year. But uh, it's been great chatting with you. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I was going to say for, the you know, the remainder of the week and then for folks that maybe aren't able to be here or, or don't get a chance to see you, how can they connect with you? So we have a booth up here, uh, one floor above, uh, 914, okay. uh, where people can stop by. Uh, we have a good presence uh, on the web, of course, on social. So feel free to look at inter.link. It's the website. Uh, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to hear more, learn more. I think we have a few press releases coming up. We're featured in Capacity Media. Okay. Uh, we have now the uh, the interview that <laughs> the two of us did. Yep. So I think there's uh, there's plenty of chances to, to get in touch. Fantastic. Thank you, Theo. We thank appreciate you. it. Thanks thank for coming. Thank you very much. Yep. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in this morning to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Stay tuned for more interviews throughout the rest of the day and the show. And until then, happy networking.